Well, it happened. We finally kicked the 1970s out of our home. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about a major renovation that we did to our home. Majority of our kitchen, flooring, ceilings, paint, um, lightning fixtures, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I wanna tell you about how we went about saving a lot of money in doing this renovation. We did choose a contractor, but then we decided what were the things that we could do. Now, a little bit of warning here before I get into this. In order to save that money, we did hundreds of hours, yes, hundreds of hours of manual labor. Sometimes I get a little PTSD when I see the renovation pictures and think about just how many hours we spent doing this renovation, but it really was worth it. The entire renovation of the main floor of our home, we were able to keep under $30,000 now let me jump in here and tell you how we did it. When we bought our house about 10 years ago, a lot of it was original from the 1970s, and so we went about saving and planning how we could renovate some things. In fact, a number of our appliances were original from the 1970s. I guess they say they don't make them like they used to. They had lasted well over 40 years. The cabinets, a lot of the flooring, including pink shag carpet in the master bathroom. Mmm, that fuzzy feeling on your toes in the morning of shag carpet when you're trying to use the bathroom. Yeah, I don't recommend. The bulk of this renovation was the kitchen. We did a full gut job in the kitchen, knocked a wall uh, out to open it up and make it feel a little bit bigger. New cabinetry, countertops, appliances, all that fun stuff. And the other thing we wanted to do was to replace the flooring. Every single room had a different flooring option, so there was transition after transition. Some of the carpet was original from the 70s. We pulled all that out, and we decided to go with luxury vinyl plank flooring. Now, I've made a number of videos on my channel about the flooring that we choose, chose, how we went about picking that flooring, and whether or not that is a project that you can do yourself. We painted every wall, including the brown trim, so we had brown trim straight out of the 70s. That required sanding, priming, and painting. And because we removed a wall, we needed to paint the entire ceiling. And a lot of the ceiling, like this over here, flows room to room. So I wasn't able just to touch up those areas where we had to fix up the ceiling. I had to paint the entire ceiling, which I gotta say makes a huge difference. So if you're doing your renovation, definitely paint your ceiling. And I'm gonna recommend that you do that when your floor is removed because it saves a lot of time and you don't mind if you splatter a little bit of paint here or there. We painted our exterior doors replaced all of our light fixtures, changed every outlet from that yellowish 1970s outlet style to uh, bright white and outlet covers. We removed two built-in cabinets that were in the home. That had been, they were custom installed cabinets. They were cool, but they made the layout and the floor plan a little bit awkward. One was right in our entryway. Another one was in our den area, which made it hard to arrange furniture. And so our goal was to stay under $30,000. So we got a contractor, we brought him in, and he gave us a long quote. And if he did everything himself, we would have been well over $50,000. Now, thankfully, the contractor that we selected was willing to work with us. He was gonna allow us to do things on our own to save money. So here were some of the things that we decided to do ourselves. So one of the things that I did was I banked a bunch of off time. I saved up six weeks where I could do the bulk of this work. I knew I needed some friends, so I was calling in favors. And the other thing that I needed was a poodle and also my dad to help out. So thank you, dad, for all the hours of free labor. I kind of owe you one. And speaking of dad, we actually moved out of the house. The majority of our main uh, living area got fully demoed and we were renovating. So took the kids, packed them off to grandma's house, which thankfully was not too far away so that we could come and do work during the day. The first thing that we decided to do ourselves was the demo. And the only thing I ended up paying for in demo was our contractor had a dump trailer, which he charged me $500 to use. I could fill that up with the stuff that we demoed, but that saved us over $1,200 right off the bat. Demo is labor intensive, but it's not too bad. Wear your safety gear, grab your sledgehammer, get a buddy. Uh, be careful when you're swinging a sledgehammer around your buddy or else you will find yourself without a buddy very soon. And with three guys, it took the better part of a day pulling out flooring ripping out the cabinets. One of the weird things about our home is again, I'm saying they don't build them like they used to. In 1970, they built this thing to withstand like a freight train coming right through the middle of it. So the demo was actually quite difficult, but it was definitely worth that $1,200 in savings. After the demo, we had the contractor do the drywall. Now I know conceptually how to do drywall, but when I try to do drywall myself, the results just aren't that great. So we left that to them, especially patching the ceiling from where the wall was removed. And at this point, once the drywall was done, it was time to paint. Now this is a major labor intensive 
task, that will save you a lot of money. Our quote to do the paint, uh, to have the contractor do the paint was well over $2,000. So we put in a lot of sweat equity, especially the ceiling. It took three coats to get that yellow fade out of the ceiling, two coats of primer, and then I think it was two coats of regular paint. And the nice thing is we did that without the floor installed, and it didn't matter if you splattered on the walls because we were gonna paint those too. Another thing that we did was we put crown molding in, which means we didn't even, meant we didn't even have to do the edging around the top. We had to paint the crown molding and then that allowed us to save time in painting. But it was a lot of hours of painting, but you can save a lot of money there. If you like the sound of saving money, definitely hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more videos on the Poodle Dad channel. Let's keep going here. The next thing that we decided to do ourselves was both the electrical and the plumbing. Now, um, this is where you're gonna need a buddy. So I had a friend who was experienced in electrical. He came over. I know enough electrical to hopefully not kill myself, but when we laid out our design for the kitchen, Nothing was moving with plumbing except the refrigerator, but that's not a very difficult plumbing move. You just have the water line to the ice maker. You can easily move that. So our refrigerator went from one side to the other. No big deal there on plumbing. But in terms of our sink, our sink stayed in the same spot, which meant our drain and our hot and cold lines came up into the exact same spot. And also our uh, dishwasher stayed in the same space. So when you're doing your design, if you can keep appliances and sink where they were before, that will save you money on both the electrical, because you don't want to have to move your hard lines for your dishwasher or for your garbage disposal. Uh, we did have to move the one for the refrigerator, but that wasn't too big of a deal. Doing those saved over $3,000 by doing the electrical and the plumbing ourselves. The electrical came with some more challenges because we did move our double oven. So I had a buddy help me with that. We were able to move that. Uh, it, we had previously, it was over here in this spot. One advantage is we had where I knew that doing the plumbing and the electrical wouldn't be that bad is that our basement is unfinished. That gives me access in the ceiling to both the electrical and the plumbing. So it was something I was willing to tackle myself. And one of the challenges we had was actually moving the oven. So the oven and cooktop used to be over here. Uh, we had a separate cooktop on this side and an oven in the wall. And now instead I was going to have a cooktop double oven combo. I needed a 50 amp breaker. So if that's not something you're comfortable doing, if you may want to get an electrician to do that. One of the things that make the plumbing connections a little bit easier over the last few years, they've come out with these cool things called shark bite connectors. I was a little bit skeptical, but my contractor told me he would use those in his home. So when you need to connect plumbing, you can check out shark bite fittings. I can link to the ones that we use in the description, but they really make it a lot easier. You're just clicking them together and then you can remove them with a special tool. So especially when you demo your sink and you wanna cut those lines, you can use a shark bite connector to uh, temporarily plug up those lines and then you can open them back up when you're ready to do your new sink installation. So definitely check those out, makes it a lot easier. The next thing we decided to do to save money was we scrapped the backsplash and we decided we're not gonna have a backsplash for now, I'll just paint it. If we want to do that, it's something that we can do later. We're actually a few years later, we haven't done it yet. We talk about it occasionally. I think it looks fine without it. Not doing the backsplash saved us about $1,000 for purchasing tile and having that installed. If we had done that ourselves, it wouldn't be quite as expensive, but that was some significant saving. We had the cabinets installed by the cabinet company and the countertops installed by the countertop company. I didn't want to do either of those things. And it was interesting, the cabinet company actually made some goofs and had our cabinets fully installed, had to pull them off the wall, install some spacers, and then put them back up. So we ran into some trouble there. Thankfully, it didn't affect the countertop installation. They were able to get that done. We like how the countertops and the cabinets have both turned out. After we got the cabinetry installed, well, before we did the floor, it was time to continue paint, paint, paint. We did all of the trim in the house. We did all of the doors. So I took the doors off, sanded them down, and including, if you can see way over there, the louvered doors that went on the laundry room. At this point, it was time to prepare for the biggest task and one of the biggest money savers of the entire renovation, and that was to do the floor. Now I decided to do luxury vinyl plank and I had a buddy, shout out to Tim, who works in construction. He does this full time. He gave me the confidence to do this myself. Now this is 97 continual rows of luxury vinyl plank and we did it. I wanted to do it without transition so you wouldn't see it transition from room to room. I wanted it to go seamlessly into the bathrooms, it comes all the way down into the master bedroom and the master bathroom. This was a savings of over $5,000 to install 1,200 square feet of luxury vinyl plank ourselves. 
The nice thing about LVP is it's probably the easiest flooring product that you can install. The challenge is gonna be if you have any angles or any turns as you're cutting around things, you know, going around things like cabinetry like this, going around that wall that sticks out right there, or if you ever have to move backwards. So sometimes you'll be doing your rows this way and have to go backwards into a closet or something like that. So that can present some challenges. If you have a house where most of your rooms are square or rectangle, installing this stuff is a breeze. We went with LVP because it tends to resist scratching and it's also waterproof. So having kids and a dog, we wanted to go for it. We're over uh, two years now of having this LVP in a home and I definitely enjoy it. We like it, we're happy with that purchase. The installation took a long time. You're gonna want at least two people. So it was primarily my dad. Sometimes my friend Tim was helping us when we had three, we could move pretty quickly. Even if it's just the two of you, I tended to be down on the floor. My dad would hand me a plank. I would install that. He was looking through the planks because these are computer generated images. And sometimes you will find the exact same piece with the exact same knots and you will set them right next to each other. So he kind of helped me out with that part where he was looking and making sure I didn't put the same plank next to each other so you can see some variation. Now for the number of hours that I spent looking at this floor, I can still see the knots that are identical, but you probably wouldn't notice that unless you sat here and stared at it. So overall, I recommend LVP, it's a great product. It was at this point in the installation that we ran into a major problem and that was the subfloor in the master bathroom. We pulled up a couple layers of flooring. I mentioned that lovely pink carpet. As we removed that flooring, we found that the subfloor had gotten moist over time. It was a particle board product and if it gets the slightest amount of moisture, could even be from the humidity. We did have some water issues in the crawl space before that that had soaked up and it had swelled up and it crumbled like a biscuit. So I think this was the lowest moment of our renovation. I'm standing in the master bathroom. We've got it, kind of demoed that floor. The contractor's in there with me and he says, man, it would make a lot of sense to just go ahead and do your master bathroom right now. To which, even though he was the guy who was gonna pay to do that, I fully agreed. The problem was I didn't have the at least $10,000 that it would have cost to do that master bathroom. Shout out to Dave Ramsey. We weren't gonna do the renovation unless we had the money to pay for it. And so we had to actually put that aside. I had to repair that master bathroom subfloor. We pulled a bunch of that out, put in some new flooring. And honestly, I did a temporary floor in there. I did use some LVP that I had from a previous installation, kind of did a temporary floor in the master bathroom so that we could then begin to save after this major renovation to eventually get to that master bathroom renovation. One of the keys to doing your flooring yourself is you wanna spend way more time prepping your subfloor than you can imagine. I want you down on your hands and knees, pulling out every imperfection, every nail, every staple, if you had carpet, pulling off glue, everything that you can, because when you put that final product over, you're gonna feel any bumps, you're gonna feel any dips. So we had a, a few major spots in the floor where we had to do the, the self-leveling product. We did a big one over there. We did a few in the master bedroom, but you're gonna want to get a large, long, straight edge or level, find those low signs. You can get a belt sander to sand down any high areas, or you can use that self-leveling product to make them a lot smoother. You may think you can save some time by not doing that. Don't do it. You're gonna then feel bounce in your floor. If there's a significant nail or a screw or something like that, you may even feel that pop up and it can eventually cause your installation to fail. One of the challenges with LVP is if you have a problem with one of your planks after you've done your install, you cannot pull that plank up and replace it. I wish you could, but you really can't. You'd actually have to backtrack all the way back, get that plank out, put a new one in, and then redo your installation. So you wanna make sure your subfloor is right, spend extra time down on your hands and knees and make it as good as you can before you start that install. At this point, it was time to shop for appliances. We got new refrigerator, we got new dishwasher, we got new over the range microwave and a new range cooktop combo dealie. That was over $3,500. We purchased those right around Thanksgiving and Black Friday so that we can save a little bit there. You can find appliance specials throughout the year. So this was an eight week project that ended up stretching into 10 weeks. Big shout out to my dad for all the help that he gave us and my friend Tim. Once the dust settled, we had added up all the damages. I was able to sell some of our older appliances like our refrigerator, which actually wasn't that old, kind of roll that cash into the project. When all was said and done, we spent 
57. So we did stay to that budget of under 30,000. Now I will say this, this renovation was done pre-COVID. Prices are up, inventory is difficult, can be difficult to find. And now it's much more difficult to find a contractor to do home renovation. So do I think that we could do this for under 30 uh, today in 2022? Probably not, but again, when you do a bunch of the labor yourself, get some friends to help you, you can save a lot. One of the funnier outcomes of me doing all this work uh, myself was that I was burned out from home renovation projects for well over a year. If my wife asked me to hang a picture the month after this renovation was complete, I would kind of get the shakes a little bit and tell her I wasn't sure that I could actually make it. So it was a ton of work, it was exhausting. I'm not gonna quit my day job and go into house flipping after this experience, but I think you can do some research, you can do a lot of this stuff yourself, and you can save thousands of dollars. Well, this is Jason for Poodle Dad. Like this video if it was helpful, and subscribe if you wanna see more Poodle Dad content, and I will talk to you in the next one.